All right, Hotep Jesus, thank you for uh, stepping in and talking to me. Um, no doubt. I, I really appreciate you uh, having me on with the, the debates, the, uh, wait, what, what is it? Bit, Bitcoin? Uh, blood sport. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Mine wasn't very much of a blood sport, but um, with Paul Storch, but I had a good time. I had a really, really good time. And um, I wanted to have you on because a couple of things, a couple of things. I, I mentioned this in the, in the debate that when you first kind of came onto my radar, I was like, oh man, who's, who is this dude? What, what, is, what is he doing? Because I, I first saw you on Rogan. And you weren't okay. really on my radar at that time, but I, I watched I watched it and I was like, okay, this this is pretty cool. And then when the BSV thing came up, I was like, oh god! And now you know why, <laughs> right? Now at this point, you know why. I was like, oh god. Yeah. Um, and then sort of your interaction with Joe, I was like, okay, well, this guy, you know, he's 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 sort of up on what's going on, but you know, he's maybe he's not really like a, a blockchain type of dude. And then when you, I, I guess you started interacting with Peter McCormick. There was this little thing where, and I don't know whether you were whether you were trying to be provocative, what it was, but you were telling people, "Shut up and code. Shut up and code. Shut up and code." Right? Yeah. And I was like, "Okay, all right, man. Maybe this dude ain't the one." And then you started doing these debates. You had a great debate with Giacomo Zucco and Justin Bonds. Then you had yeah. me on, and it made me take notice because I was like, "Wait a minute, is this the same dude that's the shut up and code guy?" <laughs> because I saw you like actively trying to to learn more and really absorbing things quickly and and then you know i started listening to some of your content that you were putting out at the same time picked up on your podcast which now i really really like hotep's been told you i love thanks it. thanks um yeah it's really good so if people haven't checked it out like it's very entertaining and and uh you know what you're saying i i was like man I, I, these are ideas i haven't thought about in a very long time but I was like, oh, but they're so deep. Like, I understand them deeply. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, yeah. oh it really does shape my, my worldview in a lot of ways. So I just wanted to, I wanted to start out and understand. So I was like, I got to talk to this guy about this. I, I wanted to start out and understand how, what, what was going on there, man? Because that's yeah. a really short period of time that it seems like when it comes to crypto and Bitcoin, you've just made a 180. So what <laughs> happened in that? I want to understand what right. happened in that space. Yeah, so as you already know, CoinbiseApp.com, I'm an equity partner in. My partners uh, started that out, Maher and Youssef Brothers. They started that project. I came on and helped them with growth and marketing. So I was in the Bitcoin space uh, since last year as an, as an equity partner, right? And uh, when I hit Joe Rogan, at that point, I wasn't even interested in blockchain. Like I knew, okay, this is a ledger. It keeps track of transactions. Perfect. Like I felt at that time, I didn't need to know more, right? Uh, I felt like it's a very technical thing. And if I wanted to know something, I'll just contact somebody in the blockchain, mm -hmm. right? Like I have people in my network that are in blockchain. So if I ever wanted to have that education, it was at my disposal. It just wasn't, it just wasn't what I was interested at the time. And then um, my, my one clip with BSV on Joe Rogan kept hitting my mentions from BSV people. They were like, yo, they talked about this on Rogan. They talked about this on Rogan. So then um, I entered the conversation, obviously, because it was sent to me. Right, right. And then I realized really fast I was caught in the middle of a crossfire. And there was this war happening in Bitcoin that I was completely oblivious to. Now, I was getting attacked by both sides. Bitcoin, uh, BTC was saying, hey, you're out here trying to shill BSV. Mm. And BSV was out here, no, you're a Bitcoin maximalist. You know, you're a grifter, this, that, a third. And I'm like... I don't even know what y'all talking about. Right, like, right, 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 right. I had no, I thought it was one Bitcoin. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I found out, oh, there's three Bitcoins. And then within B, uh, BCH, there's ABC and then... Um, Bitcoin Unlimited. Unlimited, right. Yeah. So, um, this is all new to me. So I was getting attacked. Like I said, I was in the middle of the crossfire. So I was like, shut up and code. Like, <laughs> like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, leave, like, don't attack me, the new guy because I don't mm. know shit. Mm. So when I found out there was a debate, I was like, I need to get to the bottom of this because if I'm telling people to buy BTC, I need to know what the fuck I'm talking about. So I was like, there's an opportunity here for me to learn. Mm. So I said, who wants to debate? And that's when um, Peter McCormick uh, bit, um, and the other guys bit, you know, uh, Shinobi, et cetera. So Getting educated in that first debate was very interesting for me because 
I got to see that what the technology was, right? What big block, blockchain is like, there's not one type of blockchain, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is an ignorance I held before. So I was like, okay, this is really interesting. They got to remember that going back to like 1996, I was building computers from scratch, right? We were going to computer shows. So my brother's a computer programmer. We had a, comp- a Commodore 64 in the eighties uh, with a modem. So mm-hmm. I'm not new to tech, right? I just might not be up to date on some of the tech mm. because I'm more, I feel like, you know, my, my strength, strength lies in talking to people and being more of a marketing guy. So I just go with my strengths, but I don't shy away from tech either. You know, I was a C plus plus coder in high school. So I know when people talk, I can follow the conversation. So mm. when I brought the conversation to me, I saw how people, how, how, how interested people were in it, into it. I was like, wow, people like really into this? Like people sat here and listened for three and a half hours Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for geeks to argue over this tech? And I sat through it. I'm like, (laughs) so then, so that was the first week, right? That was week Mm. one. So then I was like, well, I don't understand half the shit they were talking about, so let me go study. So I started studying, then I'd refer back to the the debate. And I was going back and forth because I wanted to be able to follow the debate better. Then week two came along and I was great. Then you came along. And I, uh, you, you were like week four, I think. Mm-hmm. And that was great. So I felt like with it being so many Bitcoins, I wanted to be right on the pulse of things because I love to know when a market shifts. Mm. I never wanted to be the guy who wasn't ready to shift with the market. And then you're kind of like, I missed the, 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 the Bitcoin rise, right? Because I was too stuck in my own ignorance. My own mm. ignorance told me the bankers are going to shut this down. The bankers are going to limit the growth of Bitcoin. And they have, right? Mm-hmm. But had I still in, um, entered the market at the time, and I did try. I can't say I didn't try. I don't think I tried hard enough. Because at that time, uh, when I first found out about it, I was like, you had to have all this mining equipment. And I, at mm-hmm. the time, I was just like, uh, I, I'm done with this. <laughs> you know, I didn't know I could buy it. So I, I look back at my ignorance and saying, you know, you shut this whole thing out when you could have made millions, you know? Mm-hmm. So now that I'm in it and I'm equity partner in this thing called Bitcoin, uh, called CoinBits app that sells Bitcoin, I'm like, it's really foolish of me to not know at least 10% of the technology, 20% mm. technology, be able to have these conversations with people and then honestly tell people, to buy Bitcoin from you. You can't tell somebody to buy Bitcoin from you. You don't know anything about it. It's like telling somebody to buy something, uh, you know, from your fashion boutique and you don't know what a turtleneck is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you have to have some sort of respect for the industry to sell in the industry, at least according to my personal opinion. I hate when people come into stuff and they culture vulture. Like with hip hop, we have a lot of people that come in, they'll make money off of hip hop. They won't give anything back Mm -hmm. and they know nothing about it, right? But they want to have an opinion on it. I felt like if I'm going to have an opinion on something, let me at least know what's going on. And so I come from a culture debate. In my house, me, my dad, my brother, when we're around each other, we're going to debate for 12 hours straight, right? Mm-hmm. The only time we stop is to get another Heineken or uh, to, uh, you know, when the women tell us, shut up, they get tired of us. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> or it's time to eat. And we're probably arguing through that. Also, in the Hotep community, we got like this uh, channel called Sign of the TV. Sign of the TV is a place where... Uh, quote-unquote hotep culture is debated. So you'll have the Nuwapians, the 5 percenters, the Nation of Islam, um, the Hebrew Israelites, the Moors. They all debate philosophy. Mm-hmm. So I'm able to learn about my own culture, my own history, the best through debate. And I always say, I always look at uh, Mary Leibowitz versus John Henry Clark. You know, that debate, I think, was two hours or something like that. And I learned so much history from that debate. So for me, debate is where I go to learn. So I was like, if I can be at the center of the debate and moderate the debate, because that's another thing, like people moderate debates, but they don't moderate them objectively, right? Right, this, right, this. right, right. Yeah, they got an agenda, the whole nine, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they'll set certain people up to dominate mm-hmm. the debate over a person. Whereas me, even if I'm on your side, you'll probably hate me because I can be objective, right? Mm-hmm. I can sit mm-hmm. back and say, you know, so, all right, so let's back up. Hotep Jesus, or AKA Brian Sharp, right? Or better known as Brian Sharp, my, my government name. I grow by challenging my own beliefs. Hmm. When I hold on to a notion, 
and then I see something that challenges it. And, and the cogn- we all have cognitive dissonance that kicks mm-hmm. in. We, we first say, I don't like this idea. No, it doesn't work. Me being a conscious individual, I catch myself and say, wait, we just had cognitive, cognitive dissonance kick in. Why is that? So I drop my preconceived notions and try to sit in the seat of the person that made this thing. I try to become them, to understand them. And I start arguing myself. I do this with a lot of ideas. I argue myself down. I literally debate myself in my head. This is why I'm so great at debates, because I debate myself all day long, (laughs) right? So when it comes to the debate and moderating a debate, who better than somebody who debates themselves and can be super objective? Hmm. Normally, if I had a BTC platform and I was, if I was subjective and biased, I wouldn't even have a debate. I would just debate BTC versus BTC. Well, that's, that's how most of it is in the space. That's how most okay. of it is. Like, like it's, it's because, so there's some, there's like, there's, there's some interesting things there that's several interesting things that like I, I want to speak with you about because first okay. off, so like to rewind in, as I said, in sort of, uh, coming back to and sort of having re-articulated ideas that I've held for a long time. And especially with, with like, I have not been paying attention to sort of the Hotep movement, but I was first introduced to the ideas. I went to Howard for, for school. Okay. You know, we would, we would have the Wabi and Moors. So this is a mid nineties, right? So this is the time, right? Like yeah. Israelites, they would c- come on campus. We'd be, and, and in the city talking with people, DC's that way, you know, especially at that time. And, and so many of those ideas became such a deep part of me, especially the conversations ha- having with friends and whatnot, a- approaching sort of self-sufficiency, looking at the, the government and the culture and seeing it for what it is and, and, and being, I think, so, learning to be independent and an independent thinker and to really value that is one of the things that's, I think, taken me on the path that I've been on and then I wind up here in the space. But in addition, I think the value of tribalism, mm. the value of your tribe being behind you is important. And it's mm. something that is very prominent in Bitcoin, mm. in the culture of Bitcoin, but that is so, um, there's so much pushback from the culture on that, right? They, they want to mm. uh, eliminate tribalism, like tribalism oh, okay. is a negative thing, right? Uh. But yet it's the, the, the technology and then the c- community that's swirling around the technology is it's tribal by nature because it's a sort of an emergent consensus, right? So it's, it is a culture in and of itself, like built that way. So what I'm interested to hear from you or, or, or to get your take on now having sat through this, because I, I actually think that the culture aspect of Bitcoin is far more important than the technology aspect. Right. And that why people are going to choose one coin or the other Mm. I don't think it has very much to do with the technology at all because most of the people I talk to don't even understand the technology or the right. differences, right? They can't tell the subtle differences. Yeah. Um, that so much of it is about tribalism. So I'm interested as, as somebody who understands that, that, that motion, that energy mm-hmm. and looking at the Bitcoin communities, what are your thoughts as kind of a, an outsider coming in, but very quickly sort of becoming an insider on how, how would you characterize the three different communities to you the divide the energy of BTC, BCH, and BSB? Uh, I think they're all the same. Mm. Um, I think BTC is less toxic um, on the social media end. So I, what, I, what I compare this to is Hotep versus the liberal black, right? So mm. the liberal black is more about inclusion and Hotep is more about uh, doing for ourselves, right? Mm. Not necessarily exclusion, um, but more or less like, you know, if we're included, great. If we're not, we're not pressed over it, you know, we'll just build our own platform. Now, when somebody comes and they say, there's, you know, tons of slander articles against Hotep, right? When somebody comes and they enter this space and let's say Hotep is BTC and the liberal black is BCH, right? If they come into this space, as Bitcoin, they're going to be attacked. Whereas my approach to this thing is, I don't say don't mess with the black liberals. I say, here's what we have to present. Mm. Here's what Hotep Nation has to offer. 
take your pick. You know, if you go that way, no love lost. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that our ideology is so supreme and so superior, you'll be back. So if we lose you now, you'll be back. I don't care because I believe our technology is superior. Mm. And I feel that when I saw people attacking me online, all I saw was a bunch of insecurity. Because when you're, when you're secure, you don't really care about, let's say you're dating a girl. If you're secure in yourself, you're not thinking if she's messing with another man. You too, exactly. focused, you too focused on yourself. And when everybody was scared I was going to run to another click, I was like, I have to get to the bottom of this because these guys are just too. And that's why I said shut up and code, right? Because you, you're coming off like liberals to me. Mm. It felt like politics all over again. You know, you're acting like pussies. Um, and I just didn't like that. And that's why I said, you know, I got to add some toxicity to this community because, <laughs> they, they, you know, like you need some manhood in here because mm -hmm. men, don't, men don't act like that. Only boys who jack off in front of the computer several times a day and code are doing stuff like this. You know, you're in front of the computer. It's nothing for you to switch the tab over and go into incognito and hit Pornhub. Your, your sperm is depleted. That's why you're acting like this. Mm. And that's why I say shut up and code. Just mm. go code because that's what you're good at. Obviously, you're not good at welcoming people into this space. Mm. A mm. lot of people, if, if, you know, an average person, if they came into this space and saw what I saw, they'd be out. I think, well, that's what I'm actually thankful that most of the people who are participating in, like most of the people who have Bitcoin or who have participated in crypto never get involved. I mean, even like yourself, right? You were already even involved with the company, but you weren't involved in the community. Right. right? I'm very thankful that that doesn't happen because like you say, like there's a lot, there's, there's problems. I think one of the biggest problems is there's this, this meme of, uh, and it started in BTC, I think it's less so, pro it's, 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 it's prevalent though, and I, I wish that it would be sort of crushed is this mean that there are no leaders. And mm. I think that it, it would be okay if there actually weren't any leaders, <laughs> but I mean, you being in the space for mm. like even the, the short time that you are, it's clear that there are leaders. And I mean, we can say their names, we know who they are, right? Yeah, like we, yeah. we, and I think that, that you coming into the space, even the short time that you've been here, people, start to look to you as a leader just because of the fact that you have a, a following, you have a background, you, you, you have views that are, that are firmly held. You, you say provocative things like that's what a leader does. Like that's a leader pops on. The, that's what Craig Wright did, right? Like he popped on the scene in 2014 and then, you know, again in uh, 2016, 17 and everybody just like followed him. I think the problem is that there's this meme that there are no leaders and what happens is that then you let bad leaders run roughshod over your community. Yeah. Because if there's an, like, if it's tribal, there's got to be leaders, right? There's got to be <laughs> chiefs, there's got to be elders, and there's got to be a chance to say, this person's not a good leader. Do not yeah. follow this person, right? But yeah. if everybody's like, oh, there's no leaders, they get to slip in their little, you know, and, and but, but in, in many ways, that's sort of the socialist ideal. That's the modern liberal idea, and, and, right? And, and that's what happened to me because mm. I had an interview set up with Craig Wright. Uh, Kurt was moderating and it was on MetaNet TV and that has disappeared. It's gone into history, right? Mm. But Kurt and the other guy during the debate promised me and, and said as a unique value proposition that BCH offers the ability to bookmark history so it can never be deleted. Oh, BSV. BSV. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. BSV. Yes. Thank you yes. for correcting yes. me. Thank you for correcting <laughs> me. BSV. This is how I've removed BSV from my life. It, it right. Part of my life. <laughs> Not even saying the word. It's, I, yeah, I don't even utter it. You know, I've been trying to avoid this whole conversation. <laughs> right? So we had this, we had this promise that hmm. BSV will hold history forever so nobody can delete it. Now, Hotep Jesus had a conversation with Kurt for two hours, almost two and a half hours. And uh, Craig Wright couldn't stand for not even 10 minutes. He what had to leave the What was the thing that set him off? Do you remember? I do. Oh. Um, he was very rude, right? Yeah. Um, so when we have a conversation, we let people finish their thoughts. The first time he cut me off, I said something very rude. I said... I don't know what country you're from, but where I'm from, 
we don't cut people off when mm -hmm. we allow them to finish speaking. Now, in the hotel community, we say a white man never likes to see a black man boss up on him like that. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say race any had anything to do with it. I felt it did, but I'm not going to go there. The fact of the matter is, he felt like he was a superior man in that chat and that I shouldn't be able to talk to him any way I feel like, but he should be able to talk to me any way he feels like. Now, mm -hmm. as the conversation progressed, we got onto the, uh, the talking point that BTC likes to refer to, saying that, oh, we had the higher market capitalization. Mm -hmm. So I started to bring that talking point up to debunk it, right? to say this is an invalid talking point. Mm. Now, before I could get there, Craig cut me off and said, here he goes talking about market capitalization. Uh, and yeah, that's Craig. Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, dude, we're on the same side on this particular topic, but mm -hmm. you're cutting me off. You're not even letting me finish my, my, my point. Because if you go look at my conversations with BTC, I'll say, yo, this is the same thing as saying Nike is a good company because they have a higher market cap and I fucking hate Nike, right? Right. Right. So I was entering the conversation on that level, right? Saying market cap isn't a good, and you see what he did, right? He cut me off and said, oh, I can't be in this conversation because mm. this guy's talking market cap. So I tried to say, hey, Craig, look, I agree with you. Before we can kind of get there, the, the conversation really spiraled, right? Mm. So once it spiraled, I called him fake Toshi. And once he heard that. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. He was, <laughs> right? So then he had to peel out after that. Right. You know, because he didn't, he wasn't ready for that conversation. Right. And, and my goal wasn't even to talk about that. Mm. My goal was just to have a conversation with dude. I didn't know where it was going to go, but I was like, I'm not going to bring up the, Toshi, the Satoshi stuff because I know mm -hmm. it's a sensitive topic and it's none of my business. And my beef with him is higher than that. It's more important than that uh, cookie cutter conversation of who you are, right? Mm. It was what you said that I got Kurt to admit on MetaNet TV. And this is why I believe they truly got rid of that. Because mm -hmm. by the end of the conversation, I was able to get Kurt to admit that there are leaders in the, in the BSV community. Right. Because right. they, they, they wanted to sell me and say, this is decentralized, this mm -hmm. is this, this and that. And my own common sense from business experience says, there's always going to be some sort of, somebody got to fund the project. Mm -hmm. right? Somebody's got to pay for this mining power. So there's going to be some level of centralization. So when I bring that up and he tell me, no, I'm like, look, dude, I'm not stupid. I know I'm black. I know I'm new to this space, but I'm, I'm, I'm 39 years old. I wasn't born yesterday. Mm. Two and a half hours of conversation. Kurt was finally able to admit, okay, if you want to put it like that, Hotel Jesus, yes, there are some leaders. But don't mm. lie to people. Don't deceive people because that's exactly what's going to turn them off from this space. Mm. When they come in, you tell them it's decentralized, then they find out it's centralized, and they're like, you know what? I'm going to sell everything. I'm done with this. Now, if you come in and you say, look, there's leaders here. You have the option of participating and part not participating. Be honest. Say mm. what's happening. Tell me about the Blockstream scandal. Don't hide that from me. Don't gloss over that. Mm. Tell me about the Roger Ver, uh, Craig Wright, Calvin Ayer breakup. Don't well, hide that. That was, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... Like, without me debating what I've known about that, no. If I never right, hosted right, debates, right. I would have never known why there was a BCH, BSV split. I would have never known about that fork. I knew there was a fork. I didn't know why. I didn't even know these people together. You mm. know what I mean? So be honest. Like, when I'm in the Hotel Nation and people say things like, oh, you're, uh, you believe in gender roles and you're misogynistic, my first response is so. Right. <laughs> and right. this right. is what I believe. If you want to have a debate about this, we can sit down and have discourse. But what you're not going to do is dismiss my ideology. I love your ideology. Let me listen to it. I'm objective. Mm -hmm. It seems what happens is I could be objective with other people and listen. But when I talk, nobody wants to listen. It's just, mm -hmm. oh, my God, how can you say that? Oh, my God, how can you say that? And I'm just like, how can you say the things you say? I listen to it. Mm -hmm. When you say a woman should participate in male sports. I don't like it, but I don't even really talk about it. Like, right. I'm gonna let y'all, <laughs> like, I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let this backfire on y'all because I already know where that's going. You know what I mean? Mm. I stay in my lane. Mm. That's what people don't, 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 don't understand about me, man. I'm, I'm very objective. And I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to consider all sides. But, uh, you know, if you're not willing to listen to me, you won't get me. Has, um, obviously, like, it's it, being, 
around the more commu the more human side, the meat space side, as people like to say, right? The programming, the seeing the carbon programming as opposed to the silicon programming, right? The, the, the humans of Bitcoin. Clearly that's like expanded your view of, uh, of Bitcoin. I wonder, has it changed your impression about like the significance of, of this movement? Because one thing, you know, for me, I came into this in a very ideological way, like from an ideological bent. I think a lot of early adopters really did, right? That it wasn't that I was trying to get rich or anything. In fact, I look back on, cause I was buying it hand to hand in like 2012. And I look back on old emails of dudes being like, hey man, I got a hundred BTC. You want to buy it for 14 bucks? And like, I look back on these and I'm like, oh man. And there's a ton of them, right? Yeah. To where I'm like, man, I just could have stacked up so much. And each time I'm just like, eh, you know, not yeah. expecting that it's going to go to a thousand in like nine months from then. You know what right. I mean? 10 months. So, you know, I came into it seeing that this was a, an opportunity for, for financial sovereignty to move away from the banks, to move away from the system that is not conducive to sort of how I want to see the world. Now it's definitely moved. Like I, I, I really enjoyed, I'm actually glad that on your last debate, the one dude wasn't able to be there because I really enjoyed your conversation with Crypto Blood. I thought that was like, it, it was good. Like the level of depth that you went to, the politics at the end when I was like, oh, this dude's an anarchist. That's great. When you said, you know, <laughs> uh, anybody who's voting, you're a terrorist to me. I was like, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm with them. I'm with them. With, with knowing that that's the place that you come from, which is the same place that I come from, I wonder, has being around the community and, and seeing the debates inside and how people are approaching it and where they're coming from, has it changed your impression about like what the significance of this movement might be sort of in the context of where you would like to see the world go yeah. as well? Has, has it changed any of that? Yeah, so this is where I'm gonna get canceled. Okay, go ahead, go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> um, I don't see a future for Bitcoin. Mm. I don't go, see- Expand, please. Yeah, I I think this thing, this fight has already been lost. Um, it's, it's, uh, so, all right, so BSV wants to say that, hey, we got this cryptocurrency that can be used by poor people around the world. But we know that the power lies with the miners and poor mm -hmm. people in the world can't afford mining equipment. Mm -hmm. So that talking point, I have to take it and throw it in the trash, mm -hmm. right? And it seems like sitting in these debates and, and listening to people talk and, you know, outside of some of the tech stuff, we're really having a philosophical debate. It's not even a technology debate. This is store value versus uh, means of exchange, right? But watching the debates, I, 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 I noticed very quickly that, like, if I knew the tech, I could destroy almost anybody in this debate mm. because these people aren't being honest, right? Mm. They're being loyal to their leaders, Mm. Now, that's like the debate coming up Wednesday. We got Blexit Tears defending Candace Owens against Tree of Logic. And I got my chips on Tree of Logic because Tree of Logic's coming from foundation, whereas these other people are trying to protect the fraud. Mm. You know, when you're trying to protect the fraud, you really have no legs to stand on. You, you know, you got a, it's like a fat woman hanging from a, a skinny tree branch. Mm. <laughs> it's going to break. Mm. You know, as opposed to having a strong foundation, you are the roots of the tree. I see that with the fiasco that went down with BTC and Blockstream, uh, the fiasco that happened with uh, Roger Ver and how he was treated by his devs and the dev community, uh, the way Calvin and uh, uh, Fake Toshi move. I'm like, Mm, ugh, ugh, ugh. I'm bearish, right? <laughs> I'm like, mm, mm, I'm like mm, mm. so, which, which means I have to now put on my cape. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, um, because like I said before, when I first saw Bitcoin, I, I saw it from a very altruist perspective where, you know, like I said, I thought the, the bankers would take this thing over, right? So it shows you, I wasn't looking at it as some sort of financial gain thing. I was right, looking right, at it right. from, a, from creating sovereignty for the people. And that's what I hoped it should be, would be. 
And the more debates I did, the more I realized it's not going to be that, right? Hmm. And then you have uh, some people, they say, uh, as a value, unique, pro- unique value proposition, they say, uh, this is the most government compliant cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah, that's BSV, yeah. That's yeah. crazy, man. That shit is crazy. And when I heard that, I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's not that's not what you're supposed to like, like if if that's what you do, fine, but you ain't supposed to say that. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that's not a selling proposition. That's the last thing I want to hear. Mm-hmm. You know? So when I was, you know, receiving BSV before that, I didn't know about that value proposition. So when I heard that value proposition, I'm like, all right, I gotta get rid of this shit. <laughs> mm. So, you know, so now I'm in a space where I'm just seeing like a bunch of bitches arguing. And it reminds me of early uh internet protocol conversations where everybody's fighting over power and this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. So I feel like BTC and I mean, Bitcoin period is in that phase where the dust has to settle and it's still getting kicked up, you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't know what to think of it, but seeing what I saw, seeing the bitch assness as I would call it, mm-hmm. I'm bearish, man. I'm bearish. I mean, I think there's something to shut up and code. I think there's something to that in that I wish that more people would shut up and code, right? And mm. I, I, I honestly have to tell them, I get dragged into a lot of this stuff, right? Like I get, I've gotten dragged in throughout, at least through, you know, the, the last, the hash war fork with Craig and Calvin, I was definitely dragged into that whole thing. You know, I'm dragged into kind of a current conflict that's going on with BCH. I, how I contribute is coding. That's how I've always contributed, right? Like right. that's what I that's how I know that I can push forward what I want to push forward. And it's like I would prefer to be able to sh- just shut up and code most of the time. Mm. You know, the drama on Twitter, the you know, the things I don't even go on Reddit and all the shit that they do, you know. <laughs> People hitting me on Telegram and he said and she said and they said and this and that. And it's like one, I do know that this has like real world consequences. When we have these personal spats, there's billions of dollars of value, even of my own wealth. Not, mm-hmm. not that I have billions of dollars of wealth, but I'm saying my own wealth is affected by the billions of dollars that are just blown up. Yeah. Like in the hash war, it, it went all the, you know, and you know, I did a video beforehand saying this is going to affect everybody. And the BTC people were like, no, nah, man, what are you talking about? B cash is having their little, and I was like, mm, guess what? <laughs> And, and boom, crash, there's crash too. And they're going, what, what the fuck is happening? Oh, it's, it's, it's crashing. And so, you know, it, th- there's something to be said for the shut up and code. Yeah. But I think that unfortunately, human nature being what it is, that it's a permissionless sort of thing, permissionless network. People are allowed to speak. I don't think people should be uh, prevented from speaking, mm. but there's an opportunity for people to actually show like, well, I mean, just go back to the gospels, you shall know them by their fruits, right? Mm. I, I say, look to the people and look at their fruits. Like, right. What have they actually done? What have they, co- are you, when you pick up your wallet, are you using code that they've written? No, probably don't need to listen to them over the person <laughs> who you're actually using it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The, 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 the things that they've actually, but not even the code, it's like, have they, have they gone out and introduced people to it? Are they running a business that, that will suffer if something bad happens? Do they have skin in the game? All of this. And, and so, like, I'm wondering, you know, because you're, you throw your, I don't know, you throw yourself into these. Now that I'm paying attention to you, I'm like, wow, this dude is, is, is ready to go to the mat for his beliefs, for his people, for his culture, even when they don't like it you know what i mean to speak the truth you know I, could, could you expand a little bit because you, so, you hit me with something and it's something that i have struggled with that i try to put forward in the best way that i can but it's like in all of these communities there's a lot of skeletons in the closet like you said right there's a lot of things that in order to be a good tribe member you don't it's like a family right you don't yeah. the family's dirty laundry yeah but in but in a way you almost can't be the most robust and strong network if that dirty laundry goes unaired because then you end up with like a bsv sort of situation and mindless drones yeah like, what what could be like what could be done or what do you see or what is lacking in the leaders 
what could, what idea could or ideas could be introduced that would get us to a place where we could express these things where we could mm. take the skeletons out of the closet and them not be a bad thing yeah that question is then be a, a place of power for us to fix it yeah that question is exactly why i wanted to learn the tech because i feel like we could use the tech to control the human ego the mm. problem we're dealing with here is human ego how can we create a code that says no bitch you can't touch this mm. No, you can't usurp this. No, your ego can't decide to flip the switch one day and take this another direction, right? That's why I wanted to learn a tech. Like, is there any way to control the human ego uh, through this blockchain technology to keep selfish wants out of it? Um, I don't know if it can be done, obviously, because I don't know the tech that well. But um, so, so look, at, look at what I said about Bitcoin, right? Like I said, I'm bearish on Bitcoin. That is counterintuitive. That's a counterintuitive thing for somebody to say that has equity stake in a company mm -hmm. that sells Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to come on a public platform where everybody will be able to see it and say, I don't know if you should buy Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. But I sell it. Like, who's going to be that objective, right? That's how I live my life. I live my life with transparency. If the Bitcoin community does not replicate that type of attitude, we're in for a rude awakening. Mm. If we can't be honest with ourselves, if we can't be honest with our customers, we're, uh, we're going to be in for another Federal Reserve type situation with Bitcoin, mm. you know, where it's going to be controlled by somebody else. Um, it's, it's, uh, so let's talk about why I'm bullish on Bitcoin. Okay. I feel like a lot of this shit is out of our hands. Um, especially with BTC. I feel like what's going to come is going to come. I feel like, yes, Bitcoin, BTC's price is going to increase over the long term. I do feel that way. But I feel like it's that way for the wrong reasons. I feel like it's that way because the people in charge want it to be. And they're going to succeed in their goal. You're they're saying not the powers that be. The great, yeah. when you say people in charge, you're talking hot, not the people in charge of Bitcoin, but like the people in charge. No, I'm talking about the people in charge of Bitcoin. Okay, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah please expand on that a little bit for me. Yeah, um, so I'm always going to refer back to the block stream thing and how they're able mm -hmm. to just do their own thing, right? Like they yeah, just decided yeah, yeah. to say, ah, you know what, fuck you, we're going to go this way with this mm -hmm. and successfully did it. Mm -hmm. How is that possible, Ben? <laughs> what, what makes that possible to say Bitcoin's going this way and you know what because we've you know got stain in the game and we're the developers and we went and got 70 billion dollars or whatever money they raised mm -hmm. we can come in and take BTC to a whole nother place right mm. so yeah I always look at this thing as you know Silicon Valley type startup world and you know if you got the billionaires behind you it's just a matter of floating you until success right mm. It, it, you know, like Amazon. Amazon was around forever. They'd make a single dollar, and then one day they finally broke even. And I think now ten years. I think they, it took them ten years to make a profit. Yeah, it took it's ten years. Unbelievable. Before. Yeah. So, but somebody had to float them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody right. had to keep them alive. Yeah. So I look at BTC as being a startup. I don't look at it as being the Bitcoin that I thought was going to save the world from the mm. bankers. I look at it as being. Uh, a startup that uh, a few group of people have control over. China has a piece of it. That's not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I, you know, to me, I'm just like, oh, look, more communism, mm -hmm. <laughs> just with better technology. <laughs> mm. So I'm bullish on the value as it relates to the price. I'm bearish on the value as it relates to creating sovereignty. Hmm. I wonder about like the the notion of I I really do feel that this there are no leaders is is because of exactly what you said is like one of the the most destructive memes in the space because I've always viewed it as there's leaders and I I think that like there's a current dust up that's happening it may turn into another fork like I don't think the forks in Bitcoin Cash are done like I just think that's a, like I called it Protestant Christianity. I, I, I think BTC is like the Catholic Church. I've, I've said for a long time, BCH is like Protestant Christianity, and it's just going to fork, fork, fork. But all the cool innovations are going to come 
from out of that, but it'll be real disparate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because each, each time there's innovations in governance, innovations in technology. And I think if you look at BCH right now, what's going on, it's definitely the most innovative of, of all of them in terms of real innovation. But, you know, there's a, there, there's what, what it seems to be to me that what I'm getting the idea of is people need to start recognizing that there's leaders. And I don't know, tell, tell, tell me if, if, if this makes, makes sense, like back of the envelope to you. Yeah. If people, if people address the fact that there are leaders, then perhaps it would be easier and faster for us to get to a point where we would be like, okay, fork, because those are the good leaders yeah. and choose them, but thinking for myself and choosing yeah. who I want to be the leader, right? Yeah. Not, not because I'm, I'm attached to this particular ticker symbol, not because, you know, I've fallen for some kind of propaganda because I'm not thinking, but like really to analyze it and the way that you're doing and being yeah. like, I'm going to bet on this. Yeah. And I kind of brought this up in the debate, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to bet on this because I think that's the best leaders. Forget about the technology because the technology is going to grow over time. Right. But it's going to be the best leaders that enable the best technology to take, to take place. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I mean, does that make sense that it's like yeah, so at the human element and yeah. who are the leaders, right? And just yeah. follow who are the best. And Craig, like Craig is a prime example. How could somebody right. follow a man who behaved like he did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, and I looked at how he behaved. I was like, yeah, I can't deal with nobody like this. Like, right. Just the fact that, you know, like you but, can't. But he's got people following him, which tells yeah. me that these are people with no common sense because you're an idiot if you follow somebody who behaves that way. They're following opportunity. He's greasy mm. pockets, you know, he's, mm. he, you know, people are investing in businesses. There's money being moved around there. He's providing a job. Anytime you provide somebody a job and be like, look, I ain't quit my job. I know my, right. the CEO had a little rape incident, but I kind of need my job. <laughs> right. That's how people think, you know, They're right. Like, right. Oh, he, right. oh right. he beat his wife, but uh, I'm still a Ravens fan. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Right. Like, you know, that's, that's, you know, not to make excuses for these people, but people have a livelihood that they mm -hmm. have to you know they got kids and shit like that so i think they're almost held ransom when it comes to stuff like that i look at startups you know so like i always say you know i've dealt with over 20 startups right and uh, as a consultant and employee and by working with so many founders i quickly realized it's not about the product it's about the founder mm. um you know i always said uh you know, some of the best products I ever worked on were a sucky product but a great founder and mm. the workspace was pleasant. Uh, coming to work was pleasant. Being in the office pleasant. Working through problems was pleasant. You didn't feel like, uh, you know, you were just uh, taking orders. Everybody had input, you know? Um, so when I look at, like I said before, when I look at, you know, these coins, I, I just see a bunch of startups, right? That's, that's just mm. what I see. So we do need to start saying, Hey, look, this is a leader and there's nothing wrong with having leaders. Um, we just have to be honest and say, hey, look, this is a leader and uh, these are the reasons why I like this person and this is why I'm going with this person. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You need leaders. People are naturally gonna have leadership skills. Some people are gonna need more time to develop, more experience, uh, more exposure to problems and, and pain. Um, some people are meant to be followers. Some people are meant to be security. Some people are meant mm. to be cheerleaders, not cheerleaders in the feminist sense of the word, but some people are better at uh, being uh, repeaters or, or routers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're better facilitators. Mm -hmm. um, they might be better facilitators than a leader can be. So everybody has their role in this thing. Um, but when we're dishonest and say, hey, you know, we don't need leadership or there is no leadership and the technology is going to take us there. It's like, dude, once a, a developer sits down and starts telling the AI what to do, technically the AI is not the leader. The, de the dev is. He's yeah, the one. Right. Yeah. He's, he's the one telling the. So don't tell me there's no leader because somebody's got to punch them buttons on the keyboard. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right. So don't tell me there's no leader. I'm not stupid. You need, a, you need people that's going to sit down and code. Now, the one thing I know is not a lot of people code. Right. Now, if we want to distill it down even further, not a lot of people code for blockchain. Right. It's probably less than 1% of 1%. It's probably like some exponentially, you know what I mean, decimal number of people yeah. that know how to code blockchain. Agreed. So, so once you tell me that, I know we're dealing with a minority, and I know that whenever you're dealing with that, is there has to be some sort of leadership because 
ain't nobody around. Right. <laughs> it's right, just right. y'all. So don't tell me there's no leader. There better be a leader. Mm. You know, don't tell me there's no leader because now I'm worried. Because right. I'm like, well, well, what's going on here? Then who? The, right. the, the computer's in charge? Who's in charge here? <laughs> Don't, please don't tell me the computer in charge because that's some terminated shit I'm scared of, right? Right. So be honest and say, look, there's leaders here. And then tell me who the leaders are. Don't mm. tell me, don't tell me you're BSV, like I spoke to Kurt. And this, this, is, this is another thing we spoke about when I was talking to uh, Fake Toshi. I said, um, we had the leadership uh, conversation a little bit where we tried to get into it. And I said, yeah, you know, there is some leadership involved. No, it's not the technology, this, that, and the mm-hmm, third. Mm-hmm. So I said, who's backing it? And he wanted to have a semantics debate right. of what backing means, right? right? Oh, it's backed by the miners, da 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 Right, right, right. So I, I Googled it. I said, well, there's an article here that says Calvin's backing this project. And this is on your website. <laughs> so mm-hmm. are you telling me you guys don't back this? And then he started getting more agitated because he didn't want to come out and say, Yes, me and Calvin are at the top of this pyramid. Mm. And that's very dishonest. You are at the top of the pyramid. Say it. Say you back it. Say you guys are the money behind this thing. Mm. And then tell us your philosophy and we can follow it. When we deal with Hotep Nation, everybody knows Hotep Jesus is a leader in Hotep Nation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would say, I am the leader Mm. of Hotep Nation. But they don't follow the leader. They follow the philosophy. They just Mm. enjoy the leader. People don't follow Hotep Jesus because they like Hotep Jesus. They like Hotep Jesus because his ideology is sound. Mm. They like it because it's consistent. They like it because it's transparent and honest. Mm. Nobody, I'm not going to say nobody, very few people will go on these podcasts and say the things I say because they are afraid Mm. or they have investors who they got to worry about offending and, you know, all these things in the future and, you know, all this stuff that I feel like, oh, that stuff don't apply to me. If mm. somebody wants to invest in my project, then invest in the project because they see dollar signs and not going to care about what Hotep Jesus says, right? Mm. They buy Hotep Jesus because I tell you exactly how I feel. Mm. When people watch my Joe Rogan um, podcast, they said, this is top five for me. Mm. It's When I left Joe Rogan's studio, I said to myself, damn, I said too much, right? It was very honest. I will say it's probably (laughs) it's probably the most uh, honest and open Rogan interview I've seen. I can't think of another one because there were some moments where where he was I think he was uncomfortable with the degree (laughs) of like genuineness that was coming from you because I don't think he's used to experiencing that. Yeah. 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 No, everybody has something to worry about. Mm. I ain't got shit to worry about. (laughs) You know, I could, I'm not afraid of getting canceled. I'm not afraid of my income getting hurt. My income can't get hurt. I've Mm. set myself up like that. You know, if, if worse comes to worse, I could just flip the stock market. You can't stop me from trading on the stock market. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, I'm that savvy. So when I left that studio, I said to myself, damn, I was really honest. And I was like, I don't think I wanted to say some of that stuff because Walking into that, I said, okay, Hotep, we're going to not say some of the controversial things we say because right. it's a big platform. You're representing a lot of people, da 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 And then Joe Rogan, I don't know what spell he put me under, <laughs> <laughs> but I was me, dog. I was, that was me you saw up there, you know? And the only thing I might have held back was maybe some profane language, right? Mm. But that was me. Nobody gives you them. They give you... Mm a facade, they give you a character, they give you this PR trained person. Hmm. So when people see a dude get up there with no mask, they go, oh, who's this? Oh, wow, I'm, a, hmm. I'm automatically enigmatic. And that's hmm. my strength. I'm willing to do what nobody else is willing to do. I'm willing to say what nobody else is willing to say. The stuff we talk about in the locker room, I'm gonna say on the podcast, you're gonna mm. be like, oh, you know, we can't say this outside. And I'm gonna be like, well, mm. I'm, I've always been that dude, you know? I was the dude where we'd be at the startup and the employees would have a gripe. And guess who had to break the news to the founder? Yep, there you go. I was that guy, you yeah. know? They, I was always the brave one that had to 
like I remember we were working for this one guy and he was very erratic. He was a crazy founder, dude. He, he threatened my life one time. He's like, I'll fucking what? kill you. He's, yeah, he said, I'll fucking have you killed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I can mention his name because I don't want him to kill me. But, <laughs> but yeah, he was like freaking crazy. But um, the things I got away with in that office, mm. people were like, like, you're just going to walk up to his office like that? You know, like they were afraid to approach his office where I'd walk up and be like, hey, yo, yo, I got a question, bro. And people were like, no, don't say nothing. Don't go over there. You're not supposed to say that. Da, da, da. And the crazy part is I was his favorite person in that of course. Office. Because cool. everybody was walking around eggshells, and I was yeah. the only one saying to him, like, yo, that's wrong, bro. Don't do that. that mm. Trust me, do not do that. Where's everybody else in the office? And what happened was it actually created mutiny against me because uh, people started seeing my power and started seeing my closeness with the C-level employees. So they started mm. to uh, uh, work against me because I, I had so much power with the C-level employees and so much input. So they started, like, sabotaging my work and you know, um, you know, it got kind of crazy, but, um, you know, that's just been me where if we're going to look at a project and we're going to say that this project has to succeed, we have to remove our selfish wants. You'll be in a meeting and, and say, okay, we need to do, you know, let's say we need to write some new sales copy, right? And a sales copy takes, you know, five hours of work. If I say, yo, this needs new sales copy, the guy that writes sales copy, might want to argue me down because he don't want to do the work. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know right. what I mean? So that's his selfish wants and he's not thinking about the benefit of the company. Right. Whereas me, it might take me having to stay at the club till 4 a.m. to make sure this execution goes properly and being back at the office at 6 a.m. Right. But I'm willing to do that for the benefit of the company because I'm looking at the big vision. Right. A lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people, even in politics, they're looking at their own selfish needs and not the benefit of the country. Hmm. Like when I look at what white nationalists say and their talking points, people are like, oh, my God, they're racist. Da, da, da. I'm like, all right, they might be racist. They might say some mean things. But on this thing right here, what they saying right here right. is good for America. Right. And I'm going to stand next to them on this point. Whereas hmm. you might toss out the whole individual. I mean, I'm not talking about those little, we all got our things, you know, we all, right, I'm, right. I'm misogynistic. You might say that you might dismiss all of me, but if you dismiss all of me, you're going to miss all the goodness I got and all the great things I do have to say and all my objectivity. But we have that selfishness, that ego comes into thing, comes into play, you know? So what I say is, you know, my ego don't control me. My ego is my expression. Mm. I'm guided by God or the universal soul or, the Holy Spirit, whatever word you want to use. That's my guide. That's my moral guide. That's who guides me, right? My ego don't guide me. I don't make moves based upon my ego. I express through my ego. Mm. My ego is what makes people hear me and say, oh, this guy's cocky. He's, he's too this, that, and the third, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, so when you listen to my Peter McCormick interview, you're only going to get two opinions. You're either going to get, I hate this guy, or holy shit, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And that's what I've seen. You either gonna love me, or you gonna hate me. Well, I think that's. A, I think that that's a good. It's a good place to be, right? To not be, to not be lukewarm, right? Because then that's the guy's gonna spit you out, right? Like that's that's the whole like neither hot nor cold. I think it's important to be one or the other. And I, I, I wonder, as I was thinking about this, like taking it and and. and sort of framing this in terms of the things going on in Bitcoin, the things that I would like to see be different. I find it interesting that like, let's say the three chains, there's obviously the BTC side, they've got the, the sort of crypto as established as crypto media could be on their side, but they also run a, a pretty strong propaganda game, like social media propaganda, very, very good. Like, and they've been doing that for a long time. Right. Um, you know, BCH has, uh, has Bitcoin.com and Roger Veer's whole operation. Uh, BSV has CoinGeek. What I've noticed, though, is that the amount of truth, the amount of actual info, like you're talking about, you know, that you could at least look at somebody's platform and say, at least I agree with that. Right. The amount of things, even from my own tribe, that I, can, that I find myself agreeing with is diminishing over time. I think as everybody tries to I don't know, it's like subtly slander the other guys, but also appeal to the mainstream. And I feel like 
the s- Bitcoin's not that. Right. Like, to me, Bitcoin was never that. <laughs> um, I would prefer that it was provocative. Do, do, you, do you think that these media outlets would be better served looking at it as it is from your own standpoint of where the value is, that these chains would be better served and the communities would be better served to still be raging against the machine as they've stopped doing like yeah, that's because yeah, it's completely yeah. stopped. And, yeah. and do you, and also do you think that like, are we cutting out an opportunity? I've always thought it, but are we cutting out the opportunity to, to have people to have hoteps paying attention because, yeah. Oh, this is a weapon against or a weapon for us yeah. to take on. Right. Yeah. Like, are we cutting out, are we cutting actively cutting that out by trying to appeal to wall street and the bankers and the establishment <laughs> and be, you know, uh, uh, end chain, you know, the CEO of Craig's company is down taking pictures in, in, in the Capitol building. Like I'm here talking to, talking to, uh, senators and all them regulators and it's like yo that ain't big i mean what do you like what do you what do you think about that what what needs to how does the message need to change to attract the individuals who we should be to attract the individuals that you that you believe are are the strongest individuals to to move the culture forward right now so it branches off of my previous point where are we looking at this thing for our own selfish games or is this for the people right Mm. so when I look at the Bitcoin community, I never at this point feel like I'm going to choose between BTC and BCH. I'm going to use BTC as a store of value and I'm going to use BCH as a means of exchange. And I feel like they can both exist, um, mostly because BCH has lower uh, transaction fees. So I look at BCH as being an on ramp into Bitcoin because we can play these fun games where I can give away crypto and start getting people to get wallets in their phone and they start learning about keys. And, you know, it's just like a good way to get people involved. Whereas I can't really give away Bitcoin and, you know, micro payments like that, right. you know? Um, and I'm not rich, so I can't do the Bill Pulte thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, supposedly he's not really giving stuff away. It's supposedly he's been holding back on some of these. So, uh, uh, I know somebody who he, I know somebody who he held back on and they made a video. And some <laughs> and some political people came around and paid him to take that video down. Oh damn. Oh yeah. So there's a lot of okay. things going on with that. Yeah, you definitely yeah. on to something okay. with that. Uh but yeah, I don't see myself playing that cult game. I do see myself saying a hell no to BSV and anybody entering the space, uh warning them about that. Not being toxic about that, just saying uh, you might not want to mess with those guys over there. There's a bunch of frauds over there. And just leaving it at that and like, but and, and then ending it with, but you know, make your own decision, right? Mm-hmm. But I also don't believe in unsolicited advice, right? So um, I feel like if I'm going to speak, I got to get paid, right? If I'm going to give you advice, yes. I got to get paid. Yes. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't give out free advice. Uh, I'm just not going to give out unsolicited free advice. Mm. Now, if you come to me and say, hey, Hotep Jesus, what's going on this Bitcoin thing? I'm going to tell you my opinion. And that's just is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to do what people did to me where when I entered the space, everybody gave me unsolicited advice. You know, Mm. I'd rather you give me the materials to study than to tell me what to think. Because Mm. if I'm new to the space, I don't know who to trust. I don't know if I should trust Peter. I don't know if I should trust Vin, right? I don't know if I should trust this nigga guy. I don't know who to trust. I'm new, right? Mm -hmm. But if you give me the materials to study and you give me some history, then I can start understanding what's happening. Then I can come back and say, all right, trust this guy, trust that guy, trust this guy, don't trust that guy, you know? But empower me, don't tell me what to think. And that's exactly what Hotep does. A lot of people say, yo, you know, difference between Hotep and a lot of these people in this political movement is the people in the political movement are telling you what to think. Hotep Jesus is telling you to think. <laughs> you right. know, like, I don't right. care what conclusions you come to, just make sure you're questioning that shit. Mm-hmm. Just, question what you think you're thinking because what you think you're thinking might not be right and it has to be updated based upon new facts because mm. as facts come theories change what used to be fact ain't fact no more <laughs> you know mm. so we can't always hold on to these these tight notions well I, I don't see myself picking between the two coins you know and i feel like if bitcoin is for the people let's think about what's best for the people mm. right and what's best for the people is to rage against the machine. 
to neutralize uh, the thing that has killed America since 1913, the thing that has forced America into the Civil War, the thing that has forced us into World War I and World War II. You know, a lot of people say World War II was to free these people or, you know, against this guy and that bad guy. And you know what? None of that is fucking true. Mm. The fact of the matter is people wanted to bankrupt America. Mm -hmm. A small group of people wanted to bankrupt America. And the best way to do that is to lend them money. Mm -hmm. People don't need money lent until they go to war. Mm -hmm. So they forced us into a war. When we look at the Civil War, the Civil War, uh, you know, they say was over the slaves. And the truth is the conversation between the North and South wasn't a violent one. It was really just discourse. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? France came and then uh, England came. So one came through uh, uh, Mexico, one through, came through Canada. And the, United, uh, the North had to call Russia for help, right? Mm -hmm. Now tell me, if we're having a civil war between the North and the South, what mm -hmm. the hell Russia, France, right, right, and England right, right. got to do right, right, with a civil right. war? Yeah. Now, if you can't see that there's another hand in play here, mm -hmm. you're just stupid. Mm -hmm. That's not a civil war. Then when we look at uh, the agreement that the North made with the South, the North said, look, you can come back and be a part of this nation but we will not honor the debt that you have to these bankers. Right. We don't want that debt. That ain't our debt. Our debt is paid. We paid Russia the debt by buying Alaska off them. That mm -hmm. shit property that they had, we bought that off them. Our debts right. are paid. Right. <laughs> Your debts are unpaid and we don't want to take on the debt. So when we look at these wars, we have to understand these things are about debt. When, mm. we, had the, when we had the Revolutionary War, the Revolutionary War, people like to say, they like to point to uh, some tea bags getting thrown in the sea. Mm -hmm. They like to point to a tax. The tax at the time was 1%. I'd love to pay 1% tax right now. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> right, that'd be totally fine. The fact of the matter is the war was about the fact that England was telling the United States that England was in charge of their own script. They called right. um, currency script. And that was what the war was about. America said, nah, yeah, we want our own money. We don't yes. want your money. Yeah. We want our own money. And that's what the war was about. So we talk about crypto. We're talking about control of our own money. Mm. Right? So if we lose sight of that, we're going to have the Calvin Ayers of the world uh, sitting on the couch with the same people that put us in this mess. Mm. We've lost sight of that. We've thought about, like, for example, the devs with the block stream thing, they realized that um, if they went and got the financial backing, they control the code. Yes. So they have the power. It became a power struggle. It became a, it was a fight over power. And that's what corrupts. You know, they say power corrupts absolutely, mm -hmm. blah, 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 that whole thing. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, y'all just fighting over who got the most power, right? Now like you say, mm -hmm. oh, has power, has power, has power. I'm like, I right, see so y'all still fighting over power. Power though. Yeah. Power is, is you can't, can't have <laughs> has power without power. Right. So y'all just fighting over power. Y'all don't yeah. really care about the American people. Y'all don't care about the people in Nigeria. Right. You know, right. y'all not investing in Nigeria like that. Y'all keep talking about Zimbabwe. Y'all not investing in Zimbabwe. You're yeah. investing in your own project. So don't tell me you care about Venezuela because you're not on the ground in Venezuela trying to help right. them. That's you're right. not onboarding them. You're not, you didn't, nobody said, you know what? How about we donate? a mining facility to these countries. Mm. Who said that? Has anybody done that? No. So how are you gonna tell me this is an altruist project and you're not taking a few million and saying, let's empower this nation. Mm. It, uh, uh, Gaddafi did it, you see what happened to him. Right. right? He was gonna put the whole thing under the dinar and say, yep. yo, the, the ground in Africa is the power. Right. Who's gonna empower the nation? Who's gonna say, look, Nigeria, you uh, second greatest exporter or, 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 or possession of uh, oil. Right? Yes. But a whole bunch of other people own it. 
Who's going to go in and, and say, no, this can be your own infrastructure. Everybody goes in and says, look, nah, I'm going to take 85% and give you 15%. Right. So nobody's going out and saying, hey, you know, who's going to build a, a mining facility for black people? Mm-hmm. Who's going to build a mining facility for the poor? And then teach them how to run this mining facility. No, it's mining facility because you want to fight against the dude who has 15% of hash power as BSV. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know, so you're, you don't care about Bitcoin. You don't care about the white paper. As much as you recite the white paper, you don't care about the white paper. It's you a good point. About, it's a good point. You care about yourself. Mm. You care about yourself. I don't operate like that. If I operated like that, I'd be on Fox News every night. <laughs> <laughs> they would love to have me on their side. The, anytime I wanted, at, at any moment, Vin, at any moment, I could become a star. All I got to do is stop saying the things I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally all I got to do. But then you'll hate yourself. But then you'll hate, then you got to live with yourself. Exactly. And I can't do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I was in the music industry. You know, I could have signed the G Unit. You know, I work with 50. There's a lot of things I could have done. Now, when I say I could have signed a G unit, I'm not saying I've had a discussion and 50 said he was going to sign me. No, I'm saying that because I believe I could have taken advantage of mm. the position I was in. So I just want to make that clear before somebody says, yo, 50 was going to sign him. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is that I spent enough time in the G unit office where I could have strategized that. Mm-hmm, right. I, was, I was in the music industry. And when I saw what was happening and I saw the fraudulence and the fakeness that I had to deal with on a daily basis, and I was just like, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. I'm out. You know, mm. I'm, I'm going to go to tech, you know, and where things are a little bit less messy, you know, and less cultish and weird and, you know. But for me, it's never been about, you know, the flash or the spotlight or, you know, me. You know, we all have our personal concerns. You know, I do give a fuck about me. I am narcissistic as shit. I really fucking believe my believe in myself, you know, but it's not at the expense of others. See, that's mm. the difference. A mm. lot of people are narcissistic at the expense of others. Mm. Nah, like I just paid my, my niece's rent. Um, if, if any of my family asks for money, they got it. If somebody on the internet that's a complete stranger comes to me and asks me for, fr- from an honest perspective, it's like, yo, I really need help with this. Like, like, like one black entrepreneur, I helped her for two years for free. She worked for me for one month and quit on me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Now I could have blown her up on social media and told everything. I'm not about that. I know I did the right thing. I mm-hmm. know I helped this person out. For me, it's about the world. For me, I have a mission. I didn't take on the Hotep Jesus name to be egotistical. I took it on because it fit my mission. Mm. The mission, so I have to, so before we go there, I have to say what my philosophy is. And my philosophy is that I am Vin and Vin is me. Mm. Me and Vin share the same energy. Um, We are all one. So I believe that. Some people might believe that, but I believe we are all one. I do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've experienced that. I've had enough psychedelic experience to be pretty sure that what you just said is the truth. Yeah, we're all one energy. Yeah. So if I hurt you, I hurt me. Mm-hmm. If I help you, I help me. Right, exactly. If I help the world, I help me. I make it a better place for my children and my grandchildren. So I feel like my mission is that, right? Mm-hmm. To unite people and not separate us. Some of my things, some of my statements might divide people because it's so opinionated, but that's not my purpose. My purpose is just to make people think. So people's like, oh, you're dividing us. I'm like, uh, I might be, you're right. I might be, that statement might've been divisive, but that wasn't my purpose. Like I did it to make you think. And the fact that you couldn't see that lets me know you weren't thinking, you know what I mean? Mm. So I kind of have to dismiss you or I'll block you and say, you know, you're just an idiot. I can't have time with that. But if the Bitcoin community doesn't have that type of mentality, doesn't have a Jesus-like mentality, it's just in the Federal Reserve. It, it, it seems so hard that like, you're never going to get the masses to have a Jesus-like mentality. But I do wonder if like... Don't need them. Right. We just need the key players to be. That's, this, this, and, and this is what, I'm, this is what I'm, I'm thinking is that, and it's why I'm glad that, it's why I wanted to reach out to you. It's why I wanted to talk to you. It's why I hope that you keep uh, speaking within the community because I think that these are things that people need to hear and it will help them to 
start thinking for themselves and choosing the right path. And I hope that the people who really feel that way too, because I, and I know that they are there, right? Like, because I interact with them. And it's so strange to hear people, I try to, you know, I, I, I call myself a Bitcoin heretic, right? Like I'm constantly, even my own tribe is upset with me constantly. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to say it. If we're doing something wrong, I'm just going to say it. Like, I'm going to say this, we're, we're fucking up, right? You got to. Um, but it's, there's so many people that it's only in private when they express to me how they, would, how, how they would like to be moving in a different way. How they would like to be moving in the way that they were moving. But, yeah. that, but how that threatens, like, it, it threatens, or they feel that it threatens things around them. You know what I mean? I've called yeah. people out and said, why are you not speaking on this issue or that issue people i mean pe people people who could really like sort of if they wanted to who could like end a lot of things you know with with me in the community because they have that level of power but what's interesting is that like the response from them was not fuck this guy the response yeah. from them was to actually fix it and do the thing yeah it's just that nobody nobody was nobody's willing to like just speak the it's not even speaking truth to power just to speak the fucking truth yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. that's I, and 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 the weirdest part to me is that this is a technology that's all about finding consensus through truth like it's, mm -hmm. it's meant to be a truth machine yeah so to see a community that worships a truth machine <laughs> that is scared to tell the truth is something crazy to me. And that's why I talk the way I do. Like I talk so black and white because I feel like when we sugarcoat shit, I, I, I personally, I believe sugarcoating is lying. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I feel like it's a form of deception. No, tell me straight out. You hate me. Don't say, well, you know, some things and no, <laughs> say you hate it. I would love that, you know, and I don't think we have enough, of that type of transparency. People are always trying to walk on eggshells about the mm. truth. And you do nobody a service with that, you know? Um, but going back to the altruist thing, I get a lot of people that email me, text me, DM me, and they say, bro, you really changed me, man. Mm. You really changed me. So I don't see that the whole world has to become a Jesus-like figure. I think that the people in power, you, me, Roger, we have to be Jesus-like and the people will imitate us because we, they look to us as the leadership. So as long as we carry ourselves a certain way, the world will get better. The problem is too many of us sell out for our own selfish gain. So people think that's the way to go. So people, when they see success, when people see success, they want to know how'd you get there, right? And then they'll read up on your story and follow it. And they'll think that's the path to success for them. So they'll see somebody who got to the top doing selfish things. So they go, oh, you got to be selfish. Mm -hmm. You got to be selfish. This is cutthroat business, da 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 But they never see the person who did it honestly, you know? Mm -hmm. So they don't see uh, the Byron Allens of the world who's a multi-billionaire. Right. You know? Well, and nobody <laughs> saw that. Nobody really saw that because of the impeachment hearing. Yeah, media, media blackout. On media the blackout. Sport. Like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> unbelievable. You see, you see how he planned that on eleven thirteen the same day, and you didn't hear nothing about Byron Allen. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. The good always gets drowned out mm -hmm. because people don't. Because they know if the good gets the light of day, it'll change the world, man. Mm. It'll change the world. But think about the fact that we know about Jay-Z and Kylie Jenner being billionaires, but this yeah. dude, Byron Allen, who's been a billionaire for years, mm -hmm. I say Byron Allen, they go, who's that? And I'm like, mm -hmm. he's a billionaire. Or Rob Smith, who uh, is another black billionaire that paid for all those boys at Morehouse. That's What's the first right, thing yeah. he said? Oh, capitalism's evil. He's only doing this because it's black men. And it's just like, whoa. <laughs> You know? wow. So you see, you see how easy it is to demonize good, mm. but good doesn't get seen. So people never follow the path to success under the good path. They follow it under the Sith and not the Jedi. Right. right. More people in a position of power have to be Jedi and then mm. they'll overcome the Sith. But everybody sees the Sith because the Sith gets Fox News and mm -hmm. NBC and mm -hmm. Netflix and uh, donors and sponsors and 
you know, uh, uh, investment. That's where all the money goes to. That's where the attention goes to. And that's why I love being me because it's like I'm breaking all this shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm the guy that got to Joe Rogan with 50,000 followers. That was a nobody before that. And then mm-hmm. people watched it like, holy shit, who is this guy? And it's like, because people like me don't get a chance because we're drowned out by the, by the bad people that are in positions of success that people think mm-hmm. is the way. Mm-hmm. They think that's the way, but they've never seen the alternative. They've never seen the guy who said, yeah, you can say what you want and still be successful right mm. i've never seen that and, and so I, that's why i love being me because it's like i get to shatter all these notions and say you know these rules that you create on what you can and can't do with society don't pertain to me they pertain to you because you believe them because you believe in these rules i don't believe in these mm. rules i've never believed in these rules I remember they told me they said you don't know to be successful you get a college degree i went to college and i was hustling to the college students i signed up for college just to hustle Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was, I, my cousin had a, a shoe store and, you know, so I was hustling Timberlands to the, I, I got, I, I signed oh, up right. to hustle yeah, Timberlands. Yeah. yeah. It was an easy flip. I'm getting them for 50 and I'm selling for a buck 50. Right. Right. And I'm selling 10 in a day. I'm good for the week. You know what I mean? And, and then I look at my, my teacher pull up in a Nissan Sentra and I'm like, this can't be the way, you know, right. I, I walk into the classroom and uh, for example, my first year in school, I didn't go to a single class and I aced the exams, right? Mm. So I can't respect school. Then I go and uh, my teacher says, oh, you're late. I said, yo, I pay for this class. I pay your salary. I'll let you know when you're late, right? And then the teacher's just like, has no rebuttal to that. Because right? it's true. Because it's true. Right? <laughs> That's a, like, oh, shit, that is actually the case. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah. So then he don't fuck with me the rest of the time because oh, yeah. I'll, I'll fucking wake up this whole class yeah. and I'll be the professor. You know what I'm saying? So, so when you look at a guy who everybody says you got to go to college, then I go and work for 20 startups and everybody's hiring me. They don't even care because mm-hmm. when, I, when they sit down and have one conversation with me, they go, yeah, we need to hire this guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't care about no damn degree. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking smart. Mm-hmm. I know how to solve problems, you know, and school don't teach you that. When I, when I sign on to one of these startups, I got to teach the college kids mm-hmm. marketing and they're mm-hmm. marketing majors. Mm-hmm. So these rules that people say you need in society don't apply to me. They apply to plebs. They apply to people that never right. thought about this world. Right. I had a lot of time to think about this world. Everybody in my family on my father's side, on my mother's side, got a degree. Well, mm-hmm. my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my sister's a doctor. So when I saw all of them and I looked, I'm like, yo, every morning y'all get up and y'all go to work. Right. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that path ain't for me. Like, right. like I'm 19 getting $5,000 checks from being in the mortgage business. Mm. You can't tell me nothing. Right. Right. I got a record label. I'm walking around with three piece suits on 20 years old with grown men training grown men on how to sell a mortgage. You can't tell me nothing. Mm. So, so when I come into this world and I look at all the things and I want my purpose is to show people that all these rules that tell people you got to follow to make it don't apply to you, dog. Mm. You make up your own rules. Yes. That got to do with your strengths and your weaknesses, obviously, because you mm-hmm. don't do what Hotep Jesus do, because right. I could think on my face. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to work for everyone. Don't. <laughs> this, is not, this is not life advice. Let's just, like, <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> don't follow my path, because I'm a little bit more savvy and charismatic than the average individual. I, you know, I can think on my feet. Um, and, and, you know, I got a different background than some of y'all and I'm a little bit more financially secure than some of y'all. So That's some of the things, yeah, some of the things I say now, I wouldn't have said a few years ago cause I wouldn't be able to get a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is, um, we, we have to be careful with what we think is approved and not approved. Like who wrote that book on what you can and cannot say, show me the book. Show me the book. Show me this PC culture book. Where does it exist? You can't point to it. So obviously it don't exist. You know what I mean? And then when we talk about what's happening with the deep platforming, we talk about what's happening with people's sovereignty. And that's why crypto is so important because it allows people some sort of freedom. Exactly. You know, and we see uh, the, the First Amendment getting stripped away slowly, but slowly, slowly. So people say, you know, why are you so vulgar? Why do you say these things? I'm like, well, 
anarchy, right? So we look at anarchy. So people say anarchy is not viable. And I always look at it from a, a negotiation point of view, right? You know, you got your price that you want to be at. Mm-hmm. And the other guy on the other side has his price that want to be at. Mm-hmm. None of y'all say y'all price, right? right? You always add like 133% of to course. it. Of course, <laughs> yeah, right? of course. <laughs> or you subtract 133% uh-huh. and try to find your way to the middle. So when I say anarchy, people go, oh, no, it's not plausible. But I'm like, you don't see the game being played here in the negotiation tactics. Mm-hmm. Anarchy is me saying, no, I'm starting 133%. So when we right. compromise, at least right. it'll somewhat be in my favor. Right. If I compromise already, I've already been compromised. Well, because what they want is complete authoritarian control. They, they, basically, what they want is they want slavery. Yes. In one way, and, and, and for people to say that 30% of your income goes to somebody, you know what I'm saying? That, that so, so basically, like four months out the year, three and a half months out the year, all of that money that you earned in that time goes to somebody else. I don't know how a thinking person can't say, oh, I'm a slave. I'm a slave <laughs> for a third of the year because I just did all this work and somebody else got all the money. Right. That's, I don't understand what the difference between slavery, that's just, it's just soft slavery. You know, you still had to pay for your own shit. You had to pay for your own house, your car, your kids. You had to put food on the table and all that. But no, January, February, March, a little bit of April, all your paychecks. Just give give to somebody else who's holding the gun to your head. Yeah, literally. If that, literally. Literally. Because if you decide you're not going to do that, the guns will show up (laughs) at your door, kick it down. If you just decide over and over, no, I'm not doing that. Kick it down, or they might show up, take your ride. You know what I mean? Wesley take Snipes. Bank, everything out your bank account. Anything you got. Yeah, so that's why somebody- Kanye said slavery is a choice. And he was right. He was right. He's the American right. people literally volunteer for this shit because we don't have to pay these goddamn taxes, right? Well, and, and that's the, yes. So this is, so this is, what, this is kind of what I wanted to get to with the, with, the, with the crypto. And you said something with the deplatforming that just like, it triggered me a little bit because- yeah. I got angry at the deplatforming because I knew this shit was coming. Like I've been in, I've been in streaming media for actually 20 years now. Like okay. 1998, I started a, a, a early uh, internet radio station and I've been in it this, this whole time. That's my background in, in right. tech. And it's like, I knew 20 years ago, oh, they're gonna censor this shit. Because we were able to do whatever we wanted to do. I was like, this is not going to last. And then when YouTube came along, I was like, it's, I, I'm surprised that it lasted as long as it did. I knew this shit was coming. I was doing a, a, a live show and a podcast when it all started. Our YouTube got, got, uh, was one of the first to get completely took down. Our Facebook stream would get took down in midstream for crazy, crazy shit. But I was like... My ang- like I have this internal rage about the fact that here I am in this community that had the solution, mm. that still <laughs> has the solution yeah. to this whole shit. People getting demonetized. I'm like, fucking Bitcoin. Like mm. this, you know, this gets taken down. I'm like, Bitcoin. I can't make no money because they, they shut down my Patreon. I'm like, Bitcoin. Now we've got the thing with Pornhub, right? Just recently where PayPal's not working. And I'm like, we have no solutions. Mm-hmm. We, we had the opportunity to have all this shit ready yeah. because so many of us knew that it was coming. We're libertarians, we're voluntarists, we're anarchists. We were predicting this shit was going to happen, but we couldn't get our shit together right. to be ready with the ready-made solution for these people to just drop in because had we been ready, that would have been mass adoption of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. mass mm-hmm. adoption of cryptocurrency. But we couldn't get our shit together because, like you say, people are fighting over power, but they're fighting over power for scraps. Yeah. Yeah. Scraps. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, that was my thing. I remember when um, there's this uh, article I wrote. It was about uh, the Hotep and Alt-Right Alliance. Mm. And at the time, um, I did it to break the internet. I wanted to just, <laughs> I just wanted to crush people's minds, right? Because it's like, how could this black guy sit up here and sanction these racists that mm. say these racist things about him and his people? Mm. People didn't get it. And I was like, 
if this guy who's a white nationalist doesn't have the freedom to say the most outlandish things, everybody is in jeopardy. Our rights are in jeopardy. So I, I was one of the few that stood up and said, no, let him say whatever he wants, right? So like with the N word, I say, you know, uh, I don't agree that white people say, say the N word, but if they want to say it, say it. It's going to come with consequences. So just be careful what you say it. Like, Right. Say it in your house, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, you're gonna have to deal with the consequences if you use it in the wrong context. Yeah, right. And a lot of white people, you know, have pushed back and like, well, we should be able to say it. Yeah, you should, but you're gonna have consequences. We shouldn't have to have consequences. Well, if I call a bitch a bitch and she punched me in my mouth or slapped me, I gotta know it's gonna come with consequences, right? It sh you shouldn't get beat up for wearing a MAGA hat, but if you wear it in Compton, you should expect to get shot at, right? Right, right. yep. Things come with consequences. You can't change that. So be careful. Watch your surroundings, you know? So I was the guy, you know, that stood up, not for white nationalists, but understood, uh, sympathized their struggle mm -hmm. because I was going through a similar struggle where I was saying things and the black community called me radical. They used to call me an extremist. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to say things like, stop eating fried chicken, fried chicken is killing us, you know? And they, they would call that radical. I remember, I remember I said, yo, Mike Brown got killed. And people were like, yeah. yo, what's the solution for all of this, right? And I said, stop watching the NFL, right? And mm. nobody, now look fast forward mm. to today mm -hmm. and look where we are. Mm -hmm. Now the same people that told me I was crazy in 2014 when I said stop watching the NFL are now back in Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. And I don't back Kaepernick because I feel like it's a fraud with this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the onus ain't on the football players. It's on the viewers, right? Yes. So TV is run by the NFL and the news oh, networks. Yes. Oh, yes. Now, now, unless you're in the know, you would know that, obviously. Well, I, was, I was on a TV show for six years, so for six okay. seasons on Showtime. So it's like, what you're saying right now, I can verify that that is absolutely. Most of our producers, most of the producers, people don't know this. In reality TV, which is the biggest genre in terms of making money, they all come from broadcast news. People and people are like, and, and when I tell people, you know, how much of the narratives are crafted by the producers, mm -hmm. and then you're like, and they come from broadcast news. Ooh. Like, <laughs> wait a minute. It's got like, <laughs> like that fake shit the Kardashians are doing that you know is staged because. This person just happened to walk into the room at exactly the t right time and say this perfect thing to set this up and whatever. That, yeah, those people came from broadcast news. So what do you think you're seeing on the news? Yeah. So I was looking at this from a very financial point of view and viewership mm. point of view because NFL trumps um, in viewership. Yep. Uh, uh, every TV show depends on the NFL to advertise for advertisement. Every TV show depends on broadcast media for advertising. And what do old folks do? Everybody turn the, turn the TV on and go straight to the news, right? So the yeah. news is the conduit for everything else on TV, movies, you know, whatever, whatever. And slow the internet's moving in that space. But I knew that. So when I said it, a bunch of ignorant people were like, oh, he's being radical. Like what the hell does the NFL have to do with all of this? And the point I was trying to make is, Crash the system. Mm. If, you cr if you divest and crash the system, they have to pay attention to your struggle, right? So people never made that connection. And I'm like, the NFL is predominantly black. If we divest, the news don't get the same viewership, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other TV shows, you really can destroy the financial system of America by stop watching one sport for one Sunday out of the entire year. I ain't saying one all the Sunday, time. One Sunday. One Sunday. Well, well that, was one, that was one thing that I said, like with the whole, with the whole take a knee thing, my criticism, and, and I caught hell over it too. Um, my criticism was, but you're still playing though. <laughs> yeah. You're still, you're still playing. Like you took a knee, but you're still playing. Not only that, I mean, you, you, you'll take a knee, but I mean, Every, almost every other advertisement on there is is for the military, right? right? Who's over? Uh, who's who's trying to induce your people to go over and kill other brown people somewhere? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Put them on a boat, go kill some brown people. You've been playing with the Air Force, who's dropping drone strikes on uh, 
uh, on people in Ye uh, in Yemen uh, and and all over the world. You you've been playing, uh, you know, no problem. Air Force, Marines, all that, no problem. You'll play underneath that. Yeah. And then you'll take a knee, but you won't stop playing. Like nobody will stop playing. And so right. to me, that's just inauthentic. Yeah. I'm that's like, exactly you, that's, that's a virtue signal to me. That's like that's that's. You, you deserve, and, and, and I hate virtue signaling so much that I'm like, you deserve to be punished for a virtue signal. Yes. You deserve to be punished for that. Yeah. Like, because you're not really acting as a genuine person. There's no, nothing authentic there. You know what I mean? Right. Ali went to jail over what he believed exactly. in. Exactly. <laughs> Kaepernick's no Ali. He Ali's, gave up the champion. He gave up the belt. He gave up the belt for what he believed in. You know, he, they said he couldn't box. It wasn't like- Could he, not box. He had to go to Africa to box, dog. <laughs> he had to leave the whole continent to box, right? So, you know, I, I look at, I look at the, uh, the, um, um, the point you made about um, the guys are not playing. You know, the Kaepernicks and, and these people, you know, still deciding to play is being complete hypocrisy and bigotry. Like you're still participating, you're still bringing them mm -hmm. mad more money. I look at the military thing, and a lot of people don't realize that at one point there was no Star Spangled Banner. Um, um, uh, initiative or uh, execution as we would call it in marketing um that was paid for by the united states military oh like that, before sporting events you're talking about yes oh in the nfl the there was an actual partnership between the military and nfl and they said look mm. we want to insert this into your events to bring more um support for our military and they cut them a check every year for that damn that's paid for it's a paid sponsorship that's Damn. not right. So when people take a knee, I'm like, you don't even realize you're actually hurting their money. Like they're not right. mad at you. Okay. They're not mad at you because you're disrespecting the flag. Right. They're mad at you because the military paid for that execution. Right. It's not there because motherfuckers want to worship the flag like right. out of the kindness of their heart. No, it was paid to be put there. Right. And they're paying your check. And they're paying you're, your check. You're taking the check from the money that's th that. Yeah, that's real disrespectful. <laughs> that's, then yeah. don't take the check. The, correct. Take a cut and pay. Yeah. So when you're I saw right. that shit, when I saw that shit, I was like, ah, y'all niggas not serious. Right. Y'all like, hey, corny, corny, you know? So, so it's, uh, I kind of just like, it's just for me, it was just funny because I was the guy in 2014 when Mike Brown got shot and I said, mm. stop messing with the NFL and it came full circle, you know? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm ahead of curve on a lot of these social issues just because of who my dad was. He was uh, intelligence section in the military. So I, I kind of have an idea of how to look at news and things like that, mm -hmm. you know? And he's, my father's the type of person where um, he always looked for a reason to challenge me, mm -hmm. you know? I remember a dude would call me up. I'd be at home playing the Super Nintendo and he'd be like, yo, I got somebody with a computer problem, you know? And mm -hmm. I got a, I had to be tech support for Windows 95 remotely. <laughs> I'd be at my friend's house with my cell phone tech support for somebody trying to like connect their printer, but I was able to do it, right? Mm, mm. So I have to close my eyes and I say, all right, press start, hit control panel, mm. hit printers, right? So it made me great, but that was the type of person my dad was where he always tried to challenge me. So it just mm. made my mind great. So when people see me analyze things, I'm like, you need to pay attention, dog. Like, cause I look at things way different from a lot of y'all. I'm looking at things very objectively, you know? Um, but if people don't start to do that um, and educate themselves, you know, like, and just start, yeah. like, that's why the Bitcoin debates are so important for me, man. Let's so say you said to me, you said, you know, you hope I stay in this conversation, right? And I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm out soon, you know? Really? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I, I came for what I wanted. I wanted the education. And I feel mm. like I, I, I came and got what I wanted. Um, I think I'm going to shift more into like the discussions that you saw with Crypto Blood. Yeah, I um, really like that. Yeah. yeah, I think those are the type of Bitcoin conversations I want to have. Mm. Um, and more um, just in that lane, you know, I just want to have those one on ones. I, I don't want to be involved in these wars anymore because um, they actually. Uh, hurt us it hurts the future of bitcoin i'm tired i'm tired of them honestly like it was yeah. it, like it was exciting for a minute but you know the the last the hash war hurt my own business so much man like uh -huh. it was ridiculous and um yeah people got to they got to think a little a little further out ahead man i mean people nobody has benefited from any of these wars yeah there's not a single 
honestly, even the even the people who may think that they benefited, they haven't. Yeah. They have like BTC is not better off for not having Roger Veer around. Mm-hmm. They're not. Yeah. Yeah. Then how are you how are you gonna kick Bitcoin Jesus? <laughs> how are you how are you gonna think? Oh, let's remove Bitcoin Jesus from the equation, and then let's talk shit. It's yeah. like, yo, this is this is a dude tirelessly for years who truly believes in this whole thing, and then you're gonna be like, nah, fuck that guy. Yeah, what? you're stupid. Then yeah, you're stupid. Like that's that's that that that's just like saying, oh, uh, we can have LeBron James for free. Uh, no, nah, fuck that guy. Like, I don't know. Nah, <laughs> no good. We don't need him. We don't need him. Just fuck him. <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> you know? Dude, like, when I heard that story, which was from Kurt. Kurt told me that story. Mm. And I appreciate Kurt. I like, I like him. He's a good guy. Um, it broke my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, it really, when I heard the Roger Ver story and I heard that a bunch of newbie devs mm-hmm. ousted him, I was like, nah, for real, for real. Nah, stop playing, dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you can't be serious. And they're like, yeah, that's what happened. And I'm like, oh. So that like that type of stuff is what has me like, number one, I'm not welcome in the Bitcoin community, right? Um, because I'm a noob, because I'm black, because I'm outspoken. And I don't really like to be somewhere I'm not wanted. Um, like I'm not wanted in conservative politics, but because that affects me so much, I'm like, fuck you, I'm here. You're gonna have to look at my black face, you know? Mm-hmm. Bitcoin's the type of thing where I feel like um I could do more for Bitcoin outside of the community than I can inside the community. Because mm. the community is just so screwed up. You know what I mean? Like it's You're like probably right. You're probably right, honestly. It's like you know, it's like uh, you know, you got a, you got a clean petri dish and you got one. That's filthy. You know, it's got all types of just disgusting bacteria. And it's like, oh, should I go and clean this up or should I just work on the clean Petri? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel and, you. And I feel like Bitcoin is just so toxic that me trying to go in there and be a part of this thing and navigate the politics of it all and mm. the money of it all. Uh, it's not an arduous task because I love arduous tasks. I love the impossible task. So it's not that. It's just mm. that I believe that that's not the right thing to do because of what they did to Roger Ver, you know, um, has me like, I don't want to help these people, you know? But you know, you, you, you may actually be onto something because, and I noticed this like in the, in the debate with Paul Storz, he, he seemed to be under this impression that like the thing to do would be to try to like bring over the people who are existing, who are already existing in one of the tribes to another tribe. And I'm like, yo man, <laughs> That's not even 1% of 1% of the population of the world. Like, yeah. I actually don't give a fuck. Like, I think <laughs> that the place to be is, and, and what's, what's strange is that there are not a lot of people left in that. And like, I think Peter McCormick might have been trying to do that, but he wasn't able to keep himself out of the, 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 the swamp and the quicksand. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you can approach it. And I, I would hope that you still, you know, that, that your interest expands, not yeah. to dig into the whole, like, dig into the community, but to be in a place where you could be a conduit for some people to come in maybe in the right way. No, right? I'm going to take over. steer them away from the toxicity of the yeah, community. Yeah, right? that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going yeah. to make the people in Bitcoin powerless. Good. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Like, that's <laughs> my plan. And I'm saying it out loud so everybody knows, bitch, I'm coming. Good. I'm coming and you guys are going to be powerless. I'm going to tell everybody, I'm going to squeal and tell everybody about all y'all dirt. Good. Since I don't want to say it. I'm going to be the transparent guy and I'm going to air everybody's dirt. And you're going to have to hate me for it. Just like I did with the conservatives. I air your dirt. I air the liberal dirt. I don't want to be in politics. I'm going to exist outside of it. I'm going to affect it from being outside of it. I'm going to provide people an alternative to be a part of it, but not to be of it. You see what mm. I'm saying? I don't want people to enter Bitcoin and be of it. I want them to be interested in it and into it, but not it of it. Like a lot of people turn Bitcoin into a religion. Like that's what I saw. Like it was like I got oh, online. Real? No, that's 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 real though. Like Bitcoin <laughs> is definitely a religion. There's no yeah. question about it. Yeah, it was like people came into this shit and it was like this is their life. And I'm like, bro, this is like not even five percent of my life. Like. Mm-hmm. I hopped into Bitcoin because it's a interest, not my interest. Mm-hmm. You know, like I got a whole bunch of different interests. 
you know. Um, I'm about to get into AI soon, you know. I got a company I'm negotiating some deal with right now with AI. I'm, I want to be a part of all this shit. I'm a businessman, you know. I have, I'm creating a portfolio of companies. I want in on all these industries. I don't see them as being separate. I see them as being all interconnected. When you start up your business, your business is going to need money. You're going to need blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. And guess who knows about blockchain technology now? Me. So I'll be able to n navigate you into that, right? Oh, your business is going to need customer service. Cool. I got AI. Mm -hmm. Boom. I can bring AI to you. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't see these businesses and industries being separate. I, being, I see them as being interconnected. And I want to know everything. I don't want to mm -hmm. know nothing. I'm a polymath. I want to know everything there is to know. I, the, my biggest regret is the fact that I'm a human being that can't live forever and know everything. I hate the fact that I can't know everything. It really bugs me. But I try my hardest. I try my hardest, you know, to know everything. But I really plan on creating a healthy place for people to enjoy Bitcoin without the toxicity. That's why I think I'm going to change what I'm doing and 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 start uniting people in bitcoin outside of the toxicity and make those guys irrelevant you know so for I th example i think you're going to be really surprised at how many people from within bitcoin how hungry they are to see something like that and it's that's the only it's like sunlight is the best disinfectant the only thing that is going to clear out the bad leadership and like allow people to actually be able to see what's good to move this thing forward is something like that so like i'm yeah. That's, that's great to hear, man. Like, I'm, I'm glad. One thing I noticed is since my foray into Bitcoin, the people that hate me are usually nobodies. Mm. And the follows I got are like CEOs, mm. CFOs, COOs, um, you know, high, high end devs, um, founders, investors, like people that actually fucking matter. Mm -hmm. everybody that matters likes Hotep Jesus and Bitcoin. The people that don't matter don't like Hotep Jesus mm -hmm. because they're plebs, they're followers, they're a part of the religion. Whereas some of these people at the higher level, it's not a religion to them, mm -hmm. you know? But again, they don't express it because they don't want to be involved in the toxicity conversations. Right. Yeah. They don't want to bring that. They're too busy doing, doing. They're too busy doing while everybody else is talking. You see what I'm saying? Like they're sh they're shutting up and coding. They're shutting up and coding. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why I say my foray into Bitcoin. I'm not gonna leave. I'm just leaving this whatever it is that I'm doing now, and I'm gonna start connecting with the people that matter and start creating a new culture of Bitcoin. I love it. I love it. Um, I love it. Like like um. Like a brother said to me, you know, before we went on air, Crypto Blood, Crypto Blood, I'm sorry, I apologize if I air this out, but um, he was very open and honest and saying about the racism in the crypto community. And mm. he was like, yo, do you know how happy I was for you to see you just shoot up to the top of the Bitcoin conversation? Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, you literally did the impossible. And I'm like, I know, bro, I know, I know. And was the first thing, you know, one of the first things I did was I circled around to go get Bitcoin Zay and Crypto Blood, the mm -hmm. dudes that, the mm -hmm. black people that came in this space before me mm -hmm. and gave them a platform. Like, nah, y'all gotta see these black faces because they're important too, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the fact that we gotta deal with racism in the technology space is just, it's just wrong. But I'm, a, I'm the type of dude that I, I, I study war and history so much that racism don't affect me. I could just mm -hmm. break all your barriers. like. People are people, you know, I'm going to break your barriers and I'm going to climb to the top, whatever the fuck it is I do, because I understand psychology and I understand history and I understand war. So you can't beat me. Mm -hmm. My, Mer you know, I don't know if people who follow astrology. My Mercury's, I mean, my Mars is in Scorpio. Mars is the planet that controls yeah, war. War, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Scorpio is the scorpion. I'm the last nigga you want to fuck with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm not even going to attack you. I'm going to set a trap and let you attack yourself. Yeah. You know yes. what I'm saying? That's how I operate. So these boundaries aren't going to apply to me, but I'm going to break them. And then when I break them, I'm bringing the soldiers in. I don't break them for myself. I break them for the people. I'm Hotep mm -hmm. Jesus. I'm for the people. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm opening these doors for all colors. You know what I mean? For all opinions, for all ideologies to enter the space and be, feel safe to speak mm. and not get attacked. That's a problem of politics. It's not safe to speak. 
It's a problem yeah. of religion. It's not safe to speak. Yes. And Bitcoin yes. has become politics and religion where it's not safe to speak. Yes. And I'm the one that's going to come in and be like, shut up and code. It's safe to speak. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it. Well, I, I mean, I think that's a great place to end it, man. I, I, <laughs> I have enjoyed this. I am, uh, I am happy to, uh, to, to have you around. I appreciate what you do. Um, People should definitely go and check out uh, Hotep Smith told you the uh, your, your podcast weekly is Fridays, right? Thursdays. Thursdays. Every, oh. it, it it hits the podcast on Fridays. Okay, got it. Got but it. But the oh. live the live is um eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're if you're the type that's very sensitive, don't watch it. Um, oh, watch it. Watch it anyway. We <laughs> <laughs> get triggered. No, it's really good. It's really, really Thanks, entertaining, man. man. Really entertaining. What else? Uh, what else should people? Where else can people check you out? Um, um, learn more. I'm a motherfucking author. You know, I, I write books. I got, I got books I wrote and haven't published yet because I'm still mastering my funnel and rollouts and all of that. For example, my marketing book was not, uh, didn't have an editor, but my, my book on masculinity, The Unbreakable Rules for Masculinity, uh, does, did have an editor. So it reads a lot better, mm -hmm. but the marketing book, uh, Joe Hart made 10, 000, makes $10,000 a month from <laughs> using my, my Twitter strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a digital thing, so you're always getting updates. See what I hate what people do, man? They don't think about the people is, uh, they'll, they'll put out the first issue of the book, Mm -hmm. And then make you buy the second one. Right right, right. right. Whereas with me, I'm like, I'm gonna put out this one digital copy of this book and update it as the technology updates and as my philosophy updates. Mm. So you got a lifetime. I like giving people value, you know, you know, cause the book is $167 right now, you know? So, um, not only that, the book comes with my book on, um, uh, reprogramming the subconscious mind mm. because my marketing book, one dude read it and he said, yo, what I, when I read this book, I didn't expect this to happen, but he said it changed my mind about a lot of things. Mm. I don't write a book for one specific reason. It, it, it's very holistic. So he said, man, it just turned. I had people that said, yo, they deleted their account and started the new one. <laughs> yeah. You know, because they were just like, they're just doing this whole shit wrong. And they said, they were like, yo, I was doing life wrong. Because I put a lot of life lessons in my book, mm. too. So the book comes with the marketing on uh, Twitter which basically it's catered towards Twitter, but you can use that in any platform. You can use it in life. It's just a great business book. Cause I even talk about SEO in this book and uh, um, uh, uh, evergreen content, you know? Uh, it comes with my list of trigger words. I got a list of, uh, I believe it's up to like 50 now or something like that, but a list of uh, trigger words that I use to make people pay attention. Mm. Um, and then it comes with, um, yeah, those three, those three items. Subconscious programming, uh, the trigger words in the book that updates as uh, life goes on. Uh, and then I have my Unbreakable Rules of Masculinity, which is my take on masculinity, which centers women as the apex predator, which a lot of people mm. in the masculinity community say the man is at the top. Nah. Right. <laughs> the, woman's, the woman's the chooser, man. She's the chooser. Come on, man. She's hunting you. <laughs> yeah, she's hunting you. And people don't realize that. So uh, my chapter, uh, the best chapters in that book from people is they say uh, women are the apex predator. Uh, and the funny thing about that book is I put a lot of misogyny in the book, right? Mm. So um, women went and bought my book immediately. I sold like 300 copies the first day, right? And women dove into my book. And they said, when I first bought this book, I was expecting to come back to Twitter and cuss you out. Mm. She said, and after I read the book, I fell in love with you. I fell in love with your philosophy. You know that what I'm saying? That works. Then obviously it's real. That's, <laughs> the, that's, the, that's the best review you can get. <laughs> yeah, because I might say things on Twitter, you know, that adds hyperbole, mm -hmm. right? It gets the people going. But in the book, I give you the real for real and the objectivity. So when men, women, women read the book, they were like, yo, you're being really bit real about it. Like the book opens up with how to maneuver around a woman's menstrual cycle, <laughs> you know, and mm. when she's ready for sex and when she's not, when she's most likely to cheat and when she's not, you know, and that's how the book starts out. Then it's the rest of the book is how to just make all that shit obsolete. Mm. And then um, the, the other chapter in that book is uh, demonstration over explication. 
and and that's uh you know a lot of men talk to women too much and it's just like mm-hmm. talking to women don't work because they don't listen <laughs> mm-hmm. it's what you do that matters so I, I really want people to understand that i'm an author too i'm a writer too i'm well published you know i have over 100 blogs on hotep nation and hannibal's at the gate.com my old blog that break down society you know when i write a blog it goes viral not a lot of people can say as a nobody that when they write a blog, it goes viral, but my writing is captivating because it's very objective and truthful and transparent. So I want people to also look at me as a writer too, and as a thinker and as a philosopher, you know? So, so that is a part of Hotep Jesus too. And we also have the Jifatize app, um, which is a Twitter companion. The best app you can have as a Twitter user, as an iPhone Twitter user, it allows you to steal and rip uh, GIFs and videos from Twitter directly to your iPhone. That's and- useful. Yeah, that's, very useful. <laughs> that's that's how I keep the people laughing. You know? Right, right, right. <laughs> and my and my book tells you how to use the software in conjunction with the strategy. Um, uh, CoinBitsApp.com, as you know, is the uh, of course you don't have your keys, but this is an on ramp for boomers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's be yep, honest. Yeah, yeah. You know, boomers don't want to go through some of these hoops, but it allows them to start investing and get involved in Bitcoin. We're not saying we're for everybody; we're for noobs. You know, so and we have that project. And then um, I got a, a web development project we're working on right now, an AI project we're working on right now, um, and in events for 2020, man. So I'm, I'm busy. I'm a busy guy, man. We're working out here. And hotepnation.com, the, the, you know, we got the snapbacks go. popping. Got the I got I to gotta, I gotta give me a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> got to. All right, man. Wow. Send me your address. Send me your address. I'll send you one. Let me one buy one. Oh, no see. shit? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I need, hey, I need a hat on you ASAP. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, man. Hotep Jesus, thank you so much for uh, for coming on. I'm going to be following what you're doing and uh, trying to amplify as much as I can uh, what you're up to because it's, it's, it's the right thing, man. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you.